Far away in a distant solar system, the ancient battle of good versus evil began. Rita Repulsa, Empress of Evil, had a dream. She dreamt that she was the sole controller of all the known universe. Never tiring, she tried again and again to take over the galaxy. Each time, a wise and kind sage, Zordon, was able to stop her, though he could never completely defeat her. These constant smaller battles led to a huge face-to-face -face showdown. Zordon against Rita. The two enemies didn't hold anything back. The universe has never known power such as this. The battle lasted for over 2,000 years. Many planets were destroyed and whole solar systems were shaken apart. Yet no matter how much they fought, neither had become the winner. It looked as if this war would never come to an end. Rita's evil little mind went to work. She offered Zordon a truce to end the fighting. Happy to finally stop this crazy war, Zordon accepted. As soon as he relaxed in this new peace, Rita tricked him. She trapped him in an interdimensional time warp. Before being sucked into the time vortex, Zordon focused all his powers into a galactic recycling bin. With the help of his robot, Alpha-5, he managed to lure Rita and her henchmen of monsters into the bin. As Zordon was zapped out of this dimension, the dumpster unloaded its magic. Slurp! The dumpster sucked Rita and her gang inside, trapped forever. For the next 10,000 years, Alpha-5 tried to find a way to bring Zordon out of the time warp. He built a control center near an inland sea on prehistoric Earth. Then the robot used a complex communication system to contact Zordon. The two began to study Earth and her dinosaurs while looking for a way to release Zordon. Time passed and the inland sea became a barren desert. The dinosaurs passed away. Alpha-5 and Zordon remained ever studying, ever planning. Zordon and Alpha-5 had planned for the worst, the possibility that Rita might escape from her dumpster prison. If that ever happened, Zordon would then teleport five teenagers to the command center. These teens would become the superheroes the world would need. Zordon and Alpha-5 would train them, show them the secret powers of the universe, arm them with unbelievable weapons, and turn them into Power Rangers. The time is now the present. Zordon is still stuck between dimensions, and Rita is trapped in the galactic recycling bin. Five teenagers practice martial arts in the small town of Angel Grove. What do a group of teens have to do with the ultimate cosmic battle between good and evil, you ask? Well, read along with me, and discover the mystery of the mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Every time you hear this sound, turn the page. Now, let's begin reading The Day of the Dumpster. Thousands of miles above the Earth, it was just another quiet day on the moon. That was until two astronauts stumbled upon a large container stuck inside of a crater. Hey, look at that! What do you think it is? Looks like a giant space dumpster. They bounced in their gravity suits closer to the dumpster. Let's open her up, suggested one of the astronauts. Not noticing the flashing red light on top, the astronauts loosened the lid of the dumpster and whoosh! Smoke poured out of the opening. The astronauts scurried away in fear as a round blue alien named Squat popped out of the dumpster and started dancing for joy. He shouted into the dumpster. All right, we're at him! Rita, wake up, wake up, we're free! He was followed by Rita's other henchmen, Finster, Babu, and Goldar. And finally by Rita Repulsa herself. Effortlessly, Rita blasted the empty dumpster into tiny pieces. Then she noticed that the frightened astronauts were still trying to get away. Rita laughed. Don't breathe. You'll miss my coming out party. That's when I destroy the nearest planet. Unfortunately, the nearest planet was Earth.
After thousands of years in a cramped dumpster, Rita was itching to cause some trouble. She wasted no time in getting to work. Finster! Start making putty patrollers! Finster quickly jumped to attention. Yes, my queen. Wanting to help, too, Goldar added, I'll lead them down and make the earth yours, Empress. Angel Grove Radio. Meanwhile, back on Earth, Billy, Kimberly, Jason, Trini, and Zach were at the Angel Grove Youth Center in Juice Bar, practicing martial arts and gymnastics. Billy was having difficulty keeping up in karate class. I'm just not good at this, he said. Billy, don't worry. I mean, even I was a beginner once. Replied Jason, the class instructor. After his students performed a few more moves, Jason stopped and asked them a question. All right, class, what is it that martial arts helps us to develop? Billy raised his hand and answered. Courage, kindness, integrity, fitness, loyalty, and discipline. Jason smiled. That's good. You memorized that very quickly. At that moment, Bulk and Skull, the two school bullies, entered the youth center and began to annoy Kimberly and Trini. Then they moved on to Jason and insisted that he teach them how to beat people up. Jason shook his head and declined. Martial arts was not developed to hurt others. Bulk, however, would not take no for an answer. So Jason decided to teach him one move, a tornado kick. When Bulk tried it, he lost his balance and found himself falling to the floor, landing flat on his face. After class, Jason and his friends walked over to the juice bar for refreshments. Jason noticed that Billy was still down about the class and tried to comfort him. Billy, I'm telling you, for your first lesson, you did really well. Billy shook his head. I don't know if I've got what it takes. It's all a state of mind, Billy. You don't need to be strong for martial arts. Said Trini. Then, pointing to his head, Zach added, Yeah, man, it's all up here. Kimberly nodded in agreement. Suddenly, the whole room began to shake. Thinking it was an earthquake, people panicked and ran from the juice bar. Miles away in the middle of the barren desert, the trembling of the earth was also felt at the secret command center and home for Alpha 5 and Zordon. Realizing Rita's escape, Zordon called on Alpha to teleport five teenagers to the command center. Back in the youth center, walls swayed and hanging lights fell from the ceiling. Jason, Kimberly, Billy, Trini, and Zach were the only ones left inside. Suddenly, they were surrounded by an energy field and felt their bodies shudder. Hold on! Jason shouted. In a flash, the five teens were rocketed to the command center and dropped into a room filled with thousands of lights and buttons. Billy was the first to notice Alpha 5. Whoa! A fully sentient, multifunctional automaton. A deep voice spoke to them from behind. Welcome, humans. The kids spun around just in time to see a huge head appear floating in a column of energy. I am Zordon, an interdimensional bee caught in a time warp. Kimberly turned to her friends. Excuse me, but will like, somebody come back to Earth and pick me up because I am totally confused. Zordon explained to the teams that the Earth was under attack and that they had been chosen to save it. Look behind you at the viewing globe. As the teens looked on, an image of Rita appeared on the glowing sphere. Zordon continued. This is Rita Repulsa, an intergalactic sorceress who is bent on controlling the universe. You've been chosen to form an elite team to battle Rita. Each of you will be given access to extraordinary powers drawn from the ancient creatures you call dinosaurs. Instantly, power morphers appeared on each of the teenagers. Zordon explained the devices to the awestruck teens. When in danger, raise them to the sky, calling the name of your dinosaur and you will morph into a formidable fighting force known to one and all as the Power Rangers. Morph is short for metamorphosis, which means to transform or change. Zack could not believe that any of this was happening and decided to leave. This is just too weird for me. He convinced the others to join him, but when they got outside of the command center, they realized that they were miles away from Angel Grove and had to walk back.
Meanwhile, on the moon, Rita looked down on the teens and ordered Finster to send an army of putty patrollers to dispose of them. The teenagers made their way through strange rock formations as they tried to get home. Suddenly, an explosion rocked them. Flying out from the smoke and from behind the rocks, a large group of putty patrollers surrounded the teens. Two of the putties grabbed Kimberly as Jason tried to gain control of the situation with high kicks and quick thinking. Trini used karate blocks to keep the putties away from her, while Zack used his hip-hop keto to defend himself. Kimberly and Billy were soon overwhelmed by the putties and were tossed near the rocks to await their fate. Zack, Trini, and Jason fought valiantly, but were not strong enough to defeat the putties and were also tossed to the rocks with the others. Everything looked hopeless. What do we do now? exclaimed Trini. Luckily, Jason remembered the power morphers and Zordon's instructions. Zordon sent these power morphers to give us power. Let's do it! Each team raised their morpher into the air, and the metamorphosis began. Mastodon! Zack, clever and brave, became the Black Power Ranger with all the strength of that ancient animal. Tyraco! Yelled Kim, graceful and smart, she morphed into the Pink Power Ranger. Triceratops! Billy became the Blue Power Ranger, adding strength to his own wisdom and patience. Fearless and agile became the Yellow Power Ranger. Tyrannosaurus! Called out Jason. This bold and powerful teenager became the Red Ranger and the team's leader. Back at the command center, Alpha 5 was very excited. Zordon, they've done it! They made the metamorphosis! Good! Teleport them to Angel Grove City. We shall just sent down Gold Hall. Again, the teens were surrounded by a brightly colored energy field as they were transported to a rooftop in Angel Grove City. Seconds later, Goldar, Rita's meanest henchman, with his army of putty patrollers, appeared in front of them. Kicks and karate chops flew through the air as the rangers fought to stop the attack of the putties. This time, the putties did not have a chance against the strength of the Power Rangers. the battle from her palace. She was quite upset that the putties were so easily defeated, especially because they were losing to a group of teenagers. Then Squat suggested, How about making Gordar beat with your wand? Oh, I always have to do everything myself! Rita screamed as she threw her wand to earth. Magic wand! Make my Gordar grow! Her wand hit the earth with a crash releasing her magic and making Goldar grow to a gigantic size. But his size did not scare the Power Rangers. Remembering Zordon's instructions, the five teen heroes called upon their dinosaurs. From a forest, a glacier, a volcano, and under the ground, 
their dinosaurs flew, ran, and rolled toward them. Filled with excitement, each ranger jumped into their zords and were surprised to find that they knew exactly how to drive them. It's almost like second nature to you, exclaimed Billy. The Power Rangers knew that it would take much more than their individual zords to defeat the oversized Goldar. Jason then shouted, Megazord Power! Answering the call, the Zords began to link up, one by one, to form the mighty Megazord. Now they were as big and as strong as Goldar. Sending a lightning blast from his sword, Goldar taunted the teens. You and your weapons are no match for me! The blast exploded right next to the Megazord control deck. Unafraid, the Power Rangers fired back in response. Their last blast sent Goldar flying backwards. All right, guys, let's power it up! Activating Megazord battle mode! Commanded Jason. The Power Rangers took their battle stations and prepared to fight as the colossal Megazord transformed into a huge robotic warrior. with his giant sword. The Power Rangers tried to fight back, but the Megazord punches did little to slow down Goldar. With a yell and a leaping kick, Goldar sent the Megazord flying. The monster's physical strength and powerful sword seemed to be too much for the Megazord to handle. You fools! I finish! Threatened Goldar. Desperate, the Power Rangers called for help. Within seconds, a huge power sword dropped from the sky with a crack of thunder. Now the fight would be fair, sword to sword. But Goldar wanted nothing to do with a fair fight. Ah, this is it over. I'll be back! Exclaimed Goldar as he disappeared and returned to Rita's lunar palace. Rita was furious. I can't believe I beat us back! At the command center, there were many congratulations. Zordon informed the group. Now that you have become Power Rangers, you must follow three basic rules or lose the protection of the power. First, never use your power for personal gain. Second, never escalate a battle unless Rita forces you. And finally, keep your identity secret. No one may know you are a Power Ranger. But Zack was not sure if the group was ready to become superheroes. I mean, we were pretty lucky this time. Luck had nothing to do with it, Zordon replied. The five of you have come together to form as fine a group of superheroes as there has ever been. You've been through an extraordinary experience together. You need each other now, and the world needs you. The teens looked around at each other. Starting with Jason, they joyfully pledged one by one to be Power Rangers. Except Kimberly. She looked sour-faced as she announced, I don't know, you guys. I mean, the outfits are cool and everything, but my hair gets all tangled up inside the helmets. I don't think I can do it. Trini was stunned. Alpha was shocked. Everyone was disappointed. Kim smiled. Not! <laughs> They all laughed with relief and then brought their hands together in friendship as they shouted their new battle cry. Power Rangers! Power 